This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. So, officially calling the meeting to order, again, now that we're on record. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, I'm, it's likely a couple more people will, will join us as it's only 6.02, but uh, let's get started. Um, so, the first agenda item is any members of the public. There are no members of the public here. And, Ed, you have your own agenda item, so you do not need to be a member of the public. So, moving right along from there. Let's talk about the minutes. I will put them up on my screen. Just one second. Do -do -do. You should have all seen them when Janet sent them out. It's loading. Give it a second. There we go. The minutes are okay. So, anyone have any edits or contributions to these minutes? I had no concerns with the minutes. And we'll move to accept as written unless someone else other, has other input. Second the motion. All in favor, voice vote please with your last name. Cassis. Arnold. Aye. Okay. Simmons. Simmons, aye. You got that, Janet? Looks like we are approved unanimously. Unanimous, uh-huh. Thank you, Janet. Thank, Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Sierra. I appreciate your input, too. Of course, of course. Um, okay, next agenda item is discussing the Zero College Highway property. So, um, Zero College Highway is a property that several committees met to talk about potential uses of, and Ed is here to tell us some more about it and about possible upcoming CPC requests. Well, and I'll just give you the background. This, is, this all started off with the Labrie's offered 4.2 acres to the town, specifically for the use as a for a public safety complex, police, fire, EMS. So that particular 4.2 acres that they're offering to the town is actually landlocked until perhaps a future development and, and a roadway goes in. So the Public Safety Building Committee is absolutely interested in the 4.2 acres. Um, and then they said, would you, you know, we'd like to we'd like to know, know, know more details about the donation of the 4.2 acres, you know, what are the restrictions on it, what have you. Um, and but would you also ask them if they'd be willing to negotiate with the town to, I'll say, acquire and and. None of the land has been subdivided yet, but there is a preliminary, shall we say, subdivision plan that's floating out there. That should, the, the front 300 feet of the property along College Highway is commercially zoned. So that preliminary subdivision plan shows it divided into four commercial lots. So they, they asked if the Libraries would be willing to sell the front right commercial lot to the town in, in addition to donating the 4.2 acres um, so that there are two reasons. One, the t depending on when that roadway goes in, the town wouldn't have to wait necessarily for that roadway to be put in for the development. And number two, it would, it would also give it um, the uh, direct access out to Route 10 for public safety vehicles, whether they be fire engines, ambulances, what have you. So they basically have a straight out shot and be turning left and right rather than a left onto a roadway into a subdivision and then a left to right out onto Route 10. Mm -hmm. So I, I did reach out to the Labrie's and 
they said, yeah, well, in, fa- in fact, we'll, we'll call the donation, you know, option A. Uh, we would be willing to negotiate with you on purchasing that front right lot. We'll call that option B. And in fact, if you, the town's interested, we're going to throw in option C, which is approximately, and it's made up of three different parcels. It, it totals about 54 acres as the three parcels that they own um, at, at that location. And, and it's interesting. Most of it's flat. The soils are good. Um, you know, we know from that preliminary subdivision that it was um, uh, a developer was looking for housing. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll say I have, you know, have had conversations with the housing authority on how do we find more, you know, proper property or parcels and smaller than, you know, than put one or a du- duplex house onto for affordable housing because we are well below our, our 10% minimum. Uh, I know from going to the park commission meetings that um, we are woefully inadequate on the space we already have adequate for you know athletic fields, which which can be open space and could you know could come through CPC as as housing could also. Um, and then you know there's been some other conversations of uh, okay, you know we're getting close to um, capacity at. Uh, you know, Nora School, uh, if that, if we were uh, needing to build a new school, how would that be done? Would we, would we look to acquire, you know, space somewhere else, but still in the same area? Or, um, you know, what one of the more common models, and I don't even know if there's enough room there or not, is, um, okay, new, new school might get approved, work through the MSBA, a new school might be get, get built on where there's athletic fields or open space or, you know, or, or what have you. And then once that school is open and operating, the old school gets torn down. So there's a number of different uses. You know, some of those might be CPC eligible for applications. Uh, some definitely would not. Uh, I, I have thought about it as a golden opportunity for the town in general. Um, and you know I, my town administrator background is to some extent you know it's zone commercial property in town is scarce um i really wouldn't want to see it whether it comes to the town or got sold and get used used for other uses other than commercial so you know one of the things i have talked about both with the select board and some of the other committees is okay um, if the town were to go through and look at acquiring that 54 acres, uh, I think it's important to keep the front park commercial. And, you know, as, as part of any town meeting vote, uh, I, would, I, would, I would suggest strongly suggest that our part of that vote is that those front commercial lots be sold off in the, in, in the future. And Basically, the number that was thrown out for the two point, uh, no, not the two point, the fifty-four entire fifty-four acre parcel is two point six million. Now, you know, un- un- unofficially, I'm just, I'm just round rounding here. Um, that front right commercial lot's probably in the neighborhood of about five hundred and fifty thousand. So. Do, doing some quick math in my head and saying, okay, well, if the town were already going to spend 550000 on that front commercial lot for access and the town kept in reserve those front three commercial lots, and they probably wouldn't sell tomorrow with commercial lots, but say they sold in the next three, five, or 12 years, if roughly the same size lot is worth, you know, half a million dollars, um, that would recoup 1.5 million. We've already deferred. And I'm just going to round it again. Another 500,000 that uh, we would have paid anyway for that front right commercial lot. So basically, I, th- I think of the entire delta for the 54 acre parcel as $600,000. Mm. Um, and we all know land isn't getting cheaper. 
uh, it's, and it's in the open spaces and whatever that could be used. And I think in, in viable places much, and I'm going to call this basically still in roughly the cent central hub of the town of Southampton. Um, it's going to get scarcer. It's going to get more expensive. Um, you know, what have you. So, you know, e even if the town <laughs> were to look at and, and take it to town meeting, you know, at that $2.6 million figure and reserve it for future use and figure out other than the public safety complex, you know, what else might, might be used for, you know, in the future. To me, it may, I think it's a win-win, um, you know, for the town. Now, yeah. I, I, again, depending on what that use is, if one of those committees comes forward and says, you know, absolutely, we'd like to move forward. Uh, you know, we'd like to have, I'm going to do the rough math in my head, say 20 or 22 acres for recreational fields. And another committee came forward and said, hey, you know, we'd love to have 20 or 22 acres to do affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and with those numbers, you can kind of maybe do the math and say, okay, this would be CPC eligible. Um, and you can say, okay, you've got, you know, roughly half of the open space going for affordable housing and half going for open space recreation type things. And, and, and where may those pots of money uh, come from? And another interesting piece of this, this parcel is, and, the topography gets to be a challenge and there's some wetlands, but there some of that area goes right back to and abuts the greenway right away. Uh, actually goes to the other side of the greenway right away. So I mean, is is there an addition and it, you know, it's probably not should we say as valuable of land as, as some of the land that's up closer to Route 10 that can be used for housing or or open space athletic fields, but still, is, is there the possibility there to either, you know, use it for some trails or whatever, or to use it as a stopping off place for on the greenway and put up a couple of picnic tables or, you know, or, or what have you. And, you know, tying this together, is, is it possible? And, you know, I've, I've had the discussions with Ty and Bond and the Greenway Committee, you know, on this, and, and it's a little early to identify where, shall we say, parking places for access in the town of Southampton to that greenway may be, um, you know, this this may be a perfect place for one, you know, one of those access points to be to be put in and, and to access the greenway in, in Southampton. So all, all those things being said, there are different dynamics on if it moved forward um, in general, say, say without C CPC, you know, requirements where, you know, it, it was clear that an application could be put in and was eligible because if we don't use CPC monies while we aren't required to have an appraisal, I've basically told, the, you know, the select board and the public safety building committee that even though we aren't, we aren't required to, we're going to get asked, you know, I mean, especially, you know, donations a donation, but, um, you know, if, if we move forward with, you know, acquiring that front commercial lot but why are you paying that uh, you know so you know we would need an appraisal on that same thing if we went for the 54 acres and if it wasn't uh whatever we thought or or were earmarking it for future use and weren't sure and it wasn't clearly cpc eligible for possible funding um you know uh i strongly feel we should have a, a, an appraisal on that portion too uh, Obviously, and this is where it gets, a, a, shall we say, tricky. And just for your own information as a CPC committee, um, while we aren't required to have that appraisal and actually can pay anything we want, even over market value for that property, not using CPC monies. Once we do use CPC monies, you know, just say theoretically again, housing was interested in and wanted 22 acres and the application went in and that's where we're going. Once we do that, we cannot pay more than 
a an established value and and and, cl- and clearly we already know just assessed values are low uh, you know so it, it and so you'd at least require the town would at least want to do one appraisal on the property to see okay does it come back at 2.6 million in, in this particular example um and if it doesn't it's not and it's not the end of the road because at that point in time Theoretically, say it came back at, you know, two million, two million, two, and was shy. At, at that point, the property owner, if they're still interested in working with the town, can go get their own appraisal uh, on the on the parcel, and maybe there comes in at two, two point eight, mm. and it's still not dead if you're that far apart because the third piece of the puzzle is okay. The two don't line up, and there's still a gap. You can do a th- do a third appraisal on it, and it's split between the town and the property owner. So, um, you know, I, I had reached out just just in general. I I know, and I now know, you know, from t- talking with you, Sierra, that okay, to be able to use the administrative funds for the appraisal, um, we'd have to have an application in, and it looks like it's moving down that thing. I, I know theoretically, without doing the cpc fund funds or whatever the at least at this point the extra cost between doing the appraisal for the 4.2 acre donated parcel and the roughly little i'm going to call it a little under an acre um commercial lot the cost of that and then the additional cost of doing the appraisal on the 54 acres right now is two thousand dollars now obviously we get into you know asking yeah if we definitely know it looks like we want to use it for why reason and cpc eligible you know maybe that becomes a little bit different or if we end up getting into a third uh shall we say appraisal it, it raises that you know cost up getting getting into that but you know that that's where we are i know i know the select board uh, is actually very supportive of trying to seriously look at the acquisition of the entire 54 acre parcel um you know they, they gave me the direction of finding out okay uh public safety building committee has their funding pot to be able to you know, move forward and do the appraisal on their two parcels, but where might we find uh, funding to do an appraisal on the uh, on the the rest of that parcel to get to the fifty four acres? And that's why I had reached out on uh, on that that piece. So now we know that, and okay, I mean, might be eligible if we know or one of those committees comes back and says we're definitely interested in in this we'd like to move forward we're willing to put in an application to cpc um but if not i, I know i i have, from my marching orders from the select board i better find them the two thousand dollars and in another pot at, you know at least for now so that we can move forward with this because it's a rare opportunity um probably the overall restriction on, on all of it, whether it's accepting the donation of the 4.2 acres, the acquisition of that front right commercial lot or the entire 54 acres. Um, you know, w- one of the restrictions is this all has to be settled, said and done for the annual town meeting vote. Mm. And, a quick turnaround. Yeah. Can I ask a question and, and state something? So the two point six million is what was offered by the Labrie's to the town. Is that my for the, for, for the entire parcel? Yes, sure. exactly. And then so, and within, within that, just to be clear, so um, they they have within that two point six million for the entire fifty four acres. Um, they're not charging now for the four point two acre donation that it's yeah. been subtracted and the other thing we have talked about with the little breeze is okay if we do acquire the entire 54 acres are we are, are would you still you're donating 4.2 somewhere in in there and deducting the cost would you still require that public safety facility to be set on that 4.2 acre parcel uh-huh. uh, and they have said no. If you acquire the entire fifty-four acres, and and 
Mark, I know the PSBC hasn't heard this piece out of me yet, uh, but now that public safety facility could go anywhere Perfect. that the town so, wanted within that, within that 54 acres. I was at the meeting and I think this land has a lot of um, potential benefit for housing, for uh, recreation fields, as well as uh, uh, definitely areas that are probably only available for only usable for open space. So I think it fits in, you know, if it moves forward, it definitely fits in with the, the goals of the CPC uh, committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, Mark can give you, give you a little, you know, some technical details uh, because, Mark, you know, Mark Darnold and actually Barry, Barry, Cyril uh, were authorized by the PSBC to go out there. Labreeze Le, Le, Le actually offered to uh, utilize their mini backhoe, and we didn't do perk tests, but we, they went out and they actually they d dug one trench on the on that four point two acre parcel where the public safety building facility would go. Uh, Mark and Barry. Uh, looked at that. Mark can give you some details. When that was through, uh, Jim and Eugene asked me if they'd like another hole somewhere else. And I asked them if they would be willing just for our own general information overall, if they'd be willing to go a couple hundred yards parallel to Route 10, but to what I will say is the left uh, and might be the area that might be incorporated for, you know, thought about for, you know, affordable housing or athletic mm -hmm. fields. Uh, and if they dig, dig another trench and they were willing to do that. But and Mark, Mark was there and he can, he can give you the details on what he saw for the soil. He, even though it was officially for the under the PSBC, uh, shall we say, <clears throat> moniker. Yeah, I had done some uh, soil analysis, a uh, study on the on the entire parcel, and uh, found it to be uh, very uh, favorable from a USDA uh, soil um, 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 polygon areas that uh, you know typically would describe what you anticipate to be on the soils, and I found those to be fairly accurate. So uh, we went out there and dug two test pits out there, and they. Um, 100% complied with what we had anticipated based upon USDA soil studies. And uh, basically it was extremely good soils, um, sandy gravels, um, which are ideal for septic system and for drainage, you know, for athletic fields, it would be nice for drainage as well. So, so they were very good soils. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a large parcel. And <laughs> most of the, I'll say the uh, westerly side, I didn't really look at anything on the, uh, the uh, east side of the Greenway, which I assume is probably uh, more wetlands and boggy and high groundwater, but uh, the westerly side adjacent to um, Route 10 is um, the areas that we saw were very good soils and would anticipate that the, uh, the remaining portion of that uh, westerly side would be very good soils as well. The, the back end of it has like a 10 to 20 degree slope down towards the um, where the Greenway is going to be in the, in the river beyond that. Correct. Um, and there's no chance that you could convince the Libria to fund this appraisal. And we certainly hope things move forward in <laughs> that we're all trying to do. I, I have asked that question on behalf of the PSBC, and uh, they have responded that no, it would not be, it isn't a, isn't a benefit to them. Fair. <laughs> no. But the Maybe question has been asked. wealthy individual would like to donate that. Mm -hmm contribution if we can't find town funds but there yeah um all right so that's that's really good to know and when it comes to you know coming to cpc for requests you know you can have a joint request um if it's sort of a cohesive project you could have multiple committees request the same thing or if you're if you think one request is sort of stronger than the other and you don't want to sort of tie them to each other you know housing could do one open space could do another and maybe it'll turn out that you know it's not going to work out for purchasing the properties but maybe when it comes to developing the properties into what we want them to be maybe that's something that the cpc could fund so right yeah very hopeful fair enough <laughs> so the next step is basically 
for seeking this appraisal funding and we sort of have to wait for that before we can really move forward or is there anything well well like i say we've got the psbc has the funding for uh the two parcels that they are currently interested in i did check with the two chairs uh of the psbc because i could not remember assuredly whether they had already voted to just allow me to go forward and uh proceed with signing that proposal for those two um christina madsen uh reviewed their meeting several meeting minutes and said no they had not uh so actually that proposal uh will be on uh the next psbc meeting at least for the first two or the three options and i have some i have some thoughts about how to get to an appraisal outside of at cpc administrative funds uh for the rest of the parcel okay great thank you so much for that educational <laughs> you're, you're you're very welcome anytime e so, even so, after the february 29th <laughs> you're gonna regret <laughs> promising that <laughs> well it, like i say there's a, there's a few projects out there that i feel very strongly about and whatever so i don't mind certain committees picking my brain so just ed um in an ideal world, you would like administrative funds, but to do that, there needs to be a proposal for looking at acquisition before we can give administrative funds so we can do dil due diligence. That's my understanding. Is that correct, Sierra? Yeah, so basically, because our only real charge is to review projects, we have to we would have to spend the admin funds as part of reviewing a project and so that's when it would become allowable um which sucks you know before i was on the cpc i had lots of dreams about what we could spend admin funds on but uh sadly it's very strictly only for like specific cpc business and reviewing like an active proposal um, which is kind of a chicken and egg situation because it's like how do we know if we want to do the proposal until we know how much the property is worth but uh that is just the conundrum of the government. So. Yeah, but, well, it's, it's that wonderful conundrum that goes all the way back to which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yep. <laughs> Hell is all this time, so. Yep. All right. Um, anything that we are uh, at 630, does anybody else want to add any questions or thoughts on this topic? So, so do we need a, how concrete a pr proposal do we need from one of the committees that then we can say if we're doing it due diligence. I guess, can a vague project come forward or does it really need to be a concrete project? I, this is actually, I don't know the specifics there. Well, um, I mean, I, I would want to see a project in good faith. You know, we wouldn't want someone to like throw something together that they didn't think was viable just for the sake of getting the appraisal through this. Um, but, you know, we've accepted projects at various stages of completion. Remember when the mountain waters came through we allowed them to like do their presentation before they had all the numbers and come back to us later with more numbers before we made the decision so i would say that's sort of a more murky area and there could be a little bit of um possibility there but a committee of some kind would have to have a cpc eligible idea of what they wanted to do um that was viable and like project worthy uh, for us to do that and 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 I I will figure out an alternative. And you know, I'll, I, what what actually drove me to ask in my my memory was that, and it, all the years blend together now is that I, I recall two or three years ago, and I can't remember. I think it was open space and that conservation had asked to uh, the CPC if they could spend administrative funds on something, and. I, th I thought they had, but I will tell you, I would have gone back through 2019 and basically the CPC administrative funds have only been spent on your membership dues uh, back in. And this is the weird part. I was, I think I emailed Sierra on it is that uh, the last time that an announcement was made in the newspaper for the applications, whatever, it was 2020, uh, you know, so, but 
other other than those those type of things. Oh, and and, and I, uh, I'm going to I'm going to assume this was tied to some type of project. I can tell you that the uh, right to farm signs that are around town, 18 of them were procured through that administrative account, but that's it. So, you know, no, nothing was expended, you know, through, you know, and open space might have asked and the answer was no or whatever. So you're clean. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't ever remember any other than what you just mentioned there. And yeah, I've been on this yeah. for forever, it seems. But I don't ever remember any administrative funds being misused, if you will. No, I, I, I see. And I, I see absolutely no like I say, I went all the way back to 2019. And so, yeah, so I, I feel better. Uh, like I say, my, my brain meshes different things together now, nowadays. So it's like, you're off the hook. I'm not going to press yeah. you for the, that $2,000. <laughs> I will find another alternative. Thank you. Well, you're always welcome to ask. And while I have you here, just on that um, newspaper ad, if it does, just in case we need to vote on this tonight, which it might be it. If we do, it turns out, want to take out a newspaper ad to announce our annual um, what's it called? Uh, public hearing. How much does a newspaper ad cost these days? That type of one. Like, what's the maximum? Because we could vote for a maximum and then spend less. It's it's all by the basically number of characters that are they're in it. Uh, I will tell you the one that I found from 2020 was 436 dollars. Uh, that's what I thought. Well, they're legal ads, so they're not cheap. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, you know, most of, and you know, I've kind of, I try to keep them as minimalistic as possible. But most of the legal ads I put in on on procurement ads, they probably run anywhere from uh, inexpensive two hundred and seventy five bucks up to three hundred and seventy five bucks, depending on again the, the number of words are in there. So, so they're not cheap. Yeah, because they know that we're legally required to do it regardless of how much it costs. So I can see right. why. Yeah, and, 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 and like I say, I still want to do some research on it and see if any of, you know, if if it's still required to or supposedly be required in a newspaper with local circulation or if that some of the modernization uh, things that the state government has done has kind of, you know, removed that uh, requirement yeah, from it. I would hazard a guess that there, if there is a local newspaper still in circulation, they probably do still want us to do that. But it's probably just that several towns don't have one. And so for them, it doesn't apply. But I know for the past couple of years, at least since I've been on the CPC, we haven't had an annual hearing. So um, at least certainly not last year. I don't think we did the year before either. So uh, it's possible that that's the why. and that's why the money wasn't spent on it because we just didn't have one at all. So yeah. I am still going to suggest that we vote to hypothetically spend that money. Well, I mean, you, you can you can vote to do that, you know, if if it's a requirement, and then you know, if if it isn't, you don't necessarily have to do it. So, but it, it gives you the option of not waiting to another meeting. That and, sounds and you and you have plenty of uh, of funds in your administrative account, you know, currently to yeah. cover it, even if it was four hundred dollars. All right, let's move on Thank to you. the next agenda item if no one has any objections. Um, so the next option is reviewing the annual annual animal community <laughs> plan draft and vote. So a little okay. background on this. I'm going to see you. Thank you all very much for allowing me into your meeting. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. We'll see you all. Bye-bye. Okay, so... Um, as you may remember from the last meeting, um, we formed a working group, uh, Mark Cassis, Randall Kemp, and I, to work on the community preservation plan. Just a refresher, this is a um, something we're supposed to do as a committee to sort of guide our, um, it's sort of a formality, but it's something that should exist. And once we've created this first one, we're gonna be able to like really easily update it every year. And it's gonna be a really light lift moving forward. But just like we just wanted to get this first one going, we're supposed to have it. We're supposed to update it every year. And then the idea is that we publish our draft. We invite um, the public to a public hearing, which is also something we're like legally required to do as a CPC. We're supposed to have a public hearing where anyone can come and speak without having to be recognized. Um, and we thought that giving them a draft of this plan as sort of a conversation starter might get some people out or it's just something nice to do. 
Um, and it's quite possible nobody will show up to this annual hearing, but that's why we're sort of working within this timeline of trying to get this done. And so our, the idea today is that in a second, I'll screen share and sort of slowly move through what we've done so far. If anything jumps out at you guys as like, oh my gosh, that's really missing. We really need to include that. Or wow, that looks incredibly wrong. Don't do that. We'll listen for your feedback. And then we were hoping you guys would vote to let me, Mark Cassis and Randall finish it ourselves and publish it. That's publishing the final draft, but not the final final for the public to see um, because we want to publish that before the next meeting so that our next meeting can be the public hearing. Does that make sense? Publish it where, Sierra? Um, publish it. Well, what I was thinking was we'd put it on our web page okay. and then the legal ad that we take out will say, please visit, you know, town of Southampton slash community preservation or whatever so that they can see it there. Gotcha. All right. So I'm going to screen share again and share what we've gotten so far. Um, you'll notice this is still, um, still got some notes and comments, um, but uh, we are, I think we are, we've made a lot of progress and we're close to the finish. It's just a matter of taking a little more time to go back to this. I'm trying to make this as large as possible. Okay. That's about what's going to do right now. Can I do 200? Let's see what 200% does. Oh yeah. That's great. Okay. So table of contents, we'll be updating that. Um, it starts with an introduction. This is um, some general state information. We didn't make this up. Um, this is just some general stats. Um, we've got a bit more about the Southampton CPA specifically. These numbers have all been checked and uh, accurate-ified. Um, it's got sort of our surcharge. It's got a, it lets people know we have the 3% uh, surcharge, what kind of properties it applies to. Um, and then it has a list of our current members. Even, even got you in there, Doug, even though you're new. Um, and it has our primary responsibility, which is to recommend projects. Um, and then it's got a history of all of the um, local surcharges and um, trust matches throughout the year since we started. And then um, it's a little description of what this plan is, which is like, hey, this is um, evolved from the CPC, open space, housing. Uh, we should say, um, uh, historic preservation. Oh, yeah. Um, and our historic, what is it? It's a historic preservation. Oh, yeah. Permission. Um, in other committees. Um, and so in future years, we're going to say this has been updated from last year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Sierra. I misled you there. Sorry. It's a historic you don't need the word preservation in there. Right. It's a committee name, not the name of the... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, housing Authority. Previous work is PVC, Open Space Commit Committee, Housing Authority. Um, I think that's what we're trying to say here. Um, so we may add a little more to that. Um, and then it has uh, where does CPA funding come from? A little more about it. This is more just general state rules. This is not us making this stuff up. Um, in case anyone was wondering, this is just to educate the public in case they're wondering what the heck the CPC and CPA is. Um, a little more about how the funding can be used and how it can't be used. Um, it's got this super handy thing that is like the most comprehensive thing that anybody could ever need if they're thinking about applying for funding. Super simple. Um, so that's great. And then it has a section about each of the... Um, CPA areas. So there's open space and outdoor recreation section. May I just say one thing? Sure. It says the following except. Shouldn't it be ex excerpt you went our following excerpt from this open space plan? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, then we, we will be proofreading this fully before it gets to any sort it, of it, it, like a metropolitan district right here. There's no space. Is it this? There we go. I love to proofread, so <laughs> let, don't, don't take offense. And I need a space here. Um, so let's, but for now, let's, it's rather, okay. all right. Time. Um, I'll be quiet. 
No, but that's great, Janet. And maybe when we get to the point of proofreading, we would love to invite you to be our uh, proofreader when it comes to that. So okay, I just love so, doing it. <laughs> good to know that you love that. Um, so, but for for now, let's work on like big picture stuff because if we start proofreading, boy, is it, are we going to get find a lot of errors? Um, <laughs> I totally agree. Um, so for outdoor uh, open space and outdoor recreation, this is pulled from um, Mark. Do you want to talk a little bit about where this info came from, Mark? Can you? I requested information from um, the chair of the open space committee that they just took from the report they're gonna give the select board this year. Um, and then some of it's actually from the um, 2001 to 2028 open space update plan, which is reference and blue above under resource needs. And I so I, this is actually pulling from what they said as goals in the uh, open space plan. Um, so that's directly in uh, listed in this plan, the, 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 uh, the five goals. And so for each section, we've got sort of a little summary. We've got um, this uh, nice image, which you can't see super well. So anytime you want to come back and look at this, if you want to spend more time with it yourself, um, you can go to the link I uh, sent out um, earlier this week. And if you see any like major errors in the meantime, you're welcome to send them to uh, me, Mark Cassis, or Randall. Um, but we've got this fun graphics, um, keeps things interesting. Um, and then we've got a list of uh, previous projects. Oh, we got some more um, uh, open space, potential need for CPA funds for the next two years. Um, and That's then- from we'll the open space committee. Oh yeah, yeah, this section. Yeah. yeah. So this is what they think might happen. And then the last five years of projects, which is always nice. Um, they've got quite a lot, which is awesome. See, when we get to housing, that list is much shorter. Obviously, we're going to clean up the large empty spaces. Don't worry about that. Um, and then category specific eligibility. This is general state laws. This is not our stuff, um, but it's still helpful for people to have. Um, it's uh, what makes you specifically eligible for this category. Um, and then there's a, a link to more resources if people feel this isn't enough. Yeah. Um, historic preservation. We're still working on this section. Um, Randall has taken this on uh, and he is uh, working on it. And uh, he's not here today. He's a, he's a busy guy, but rest assured, it's going to be updated. And um, Bob, if you have any strong feelings uh, about this, what we could do is we could send you a copy of just this section before we publish it, possibly, if you're interested in that. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's the, you left the blank in there. Uh, there are blank uh, Southampton listings on the National Register. Two. Two. All okay. right. The, uh, the stuff that's, that, that the stuff, that's done. I'm sorry, the sorry, stuff yeah. that's crossed there out. There are two yeah. listings on the National Register. Huh. The, uh, the, um, the Canal District and um, and the Cemetery. Oh, so the one the um the one with the houses in the center of town that's on the state register, right? Okay, um, so maybe we should include uh state register listings. Oh, and that's okay. We don't need to list them now. We'll, I'm sure Randall will look them up. I'm just putting it as a suggestion to add. There's a there's a ton. Of, the state register is the Macris inventory. That's the Massachusetts Cultural Resources inventory. Mm -hmm. and there's a ton. There are several houses along East Street. Uh, yeah, in, yeah, all those inventory. Good. Okay, but, okay. But the so far as the national register is concerned, there are only the two districts, the cemetery and the um, in the canal district. All right, very good to know. We've already made progress here. Thank you. Um and so this is just old stuff from Gloucester. We kept it in there so we like know like sort of what context of stuff we might want to include, but this is all gonna be gone. It's all like Gloucester crap. Um goals and possibilities, so Gloucester stuff that's gonna get moved. Um Here's, this is from, uh, again, from the state resources, state laws, what could be um, examples of projects, what can be uh, eligible and what can't. We're going to keep that. And similarly, the category specific eligibility. Um, so, Bob, we'll definitely check with you and the commission before we um, publish anything about you. Um, so, don't you worry. But uh, Randall's going to be sort of our uh, liaison for that. Okay. I'm going to set the list of the projects for the last five years that fall under historical. Fun, fun, fun. Don't worry, guys, we're almost done. Um, community housing. So this I pulled from uh, the 
our housing production plan, which we did in 2022, so it's very recent, as well as a couple of other um, resources that we have and notes and things. Um, so uh, it's got our resources and needs. It's got some definitions. I threw in another fun graphic because I always like to do that. Um, it's got some info about our housing production plan because that's sort of like the biggest info source and where a lot of this came from. Um, and it's got a list of our housing challenges, our goals, and our strategies. And so some of these are relevant to the CPA and some aren't, but um, I still think it's good for people to know sort of the general housing situation. A lot of them are very CPA related. Um, and then it's got some info about the Affordable Housing Trust, which again is not part of the CPC yet, but as soon as it gets fully, um, the trustees are appointed, then it is going to come to the CPC for a request. Um, so you know what I should add is the Housing Authority anticipates requesting CPC funding for the Housing Trust. I'm going to write that note right now. One of the things I wanted to bring up to uh, committee is there's been only one community housing project coming through, approved by the CPA in the last five years compared to 20 plus in the other two categories. So just it sort of jumped out as impressive. So yeah. Um, Hold on, I'm trying to add a comment for myself that says, Sierra, fix this. I'm going to make that look nicer. It's just a note for myself, um, category specific. And then, yeah, you'll see, hey, look, here is the uh, one project. And just for fun, I added a little status update since we literally only have one project and it hasn't been done yet. So it uh, hasn't been developed yet. Um, and then after that, it's just our CPA projects application process, which you guys already approved. Um, and so, yeah, I, first of all, any like big picture input thoughts on like a sec, a whole section that's missing, something that seems wrong, anything like that? Um, I hate to interrupt, but I have to uh, go to a planning board meeting and I still got to drive there. So I'm going to beg out. So, all and right. No worries, all, Mark. Thanks thank for you coming. So much, Mark and Sarah and uh, Randall for pulling this together. I know it's a lot of work and it looks great. Of course. So I'm going to say bye. I got to get up in the car. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> well, we are now exactly at quorum. So nobody leave. Um, <laughs> we vote. Uh, okay. So with that so said, Sierra, anything else? Yeah. D Doug here. One one thing that did jump out at me, and I, I'd love to hear everyone's opinion on, on, is we did a really great job in there. I think the, uh, the, CP, the CPA fund collections and the state match by year, mm -hmm. basically from inception. But there's not much context financially on the last five years of projects in the different buckets. What What are your thoughts on kind of detailing what some of the expenditures were of the CPA funds from there? So like um, adding an amount. Oh, no, it does. OK, only one of them has an amount. OK, so you, do you mean just adding the amount that was um, that was requested and funded for these projects? Yeah, I wonder, right, to give people some context in the last five years, how that seven or so total million from inception has been spent recently. Mm -hmm. the, collecting that data, it, it's going to be a, a lot of work. The, the, the okay. other stuff is easy to collect from existing databases. It's going to be going back through um, the t town uh, warrants for the last five years. That, that's fair. Learn. So it, it may be a good thing, even for next year, but it, it may be hard to get together between now and the next month. Sure. Um, so good good goal. Comment that is, so I would, yeah, I'll add this as a note um, and I'll see, I might be able to find an easier collection of it on the um, CPCs, like CP2 or what is it? CP1 form. There's a database I can get into that may give me some more context. So let me try one thing to see if I can get it more easily than the town warrants. Um, and if not, we'll make that a next year um, goal to add it. Does that sound good? Yeah, it does. Absolutely. That is a really great idea, though, because it does help people. You're right. It helps contextualize like, well, did you spend all of the money or did you spend none of it or what's going on here? So thanks. Anything else, guys? Awesome. So. Um, if you all would be confident enough to let me, Mark, and Randall sort of get this to its final draft form, update the historic section, 
and publish it before our next meeting, I would entertain a motion to, uh, I don't really know how I would phrase that motion, but maybe whoever makes that motion can decide. Uh, move that we designate blah, blah, blah. The, uh, to, the, to, the, to, finalize, the to finalize the um, community preservation plan publication. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Mark Cassis. All right. All in favor? Cassis. Yeah. Bye. Owl. Same as I. All right, that's great. And yeah, the entity is called the um, Community Preservation Plan Working Group. That's sort of what we're calling ourselves, what we're calling our, our band. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And then I have one more vote requested, which is, as we discussed, so um, legally we're required for our annual public hearing to publicly announce it each of two weeks prior to the hearing. And that may or may not involve, we're going to find out from Ed, um, publishing an ad in the local paper. Um, and so uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, allow us to spend, um, I would say up to what the max it could be, like up to $600 on a newspaper ad to publish the annual hearing, should that be a requirement? I will make that motion that do we approve administrative funds up to $600 for use of advertising uh, the annual uh, public hearing. Wait a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Close the bye. Cassis. Guy Hamill. Well. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. That makes things easier. Um, and do you, if you happen to have any other thoughts in the meantime, feel free to email them um, and we will try to incorporate everything as best we can. I just think you guys, the, what do you call it, working group did a wonderful job. Oh, thanks, Janet. Yeah. Thank you. A lot of work. Yeah, I agree. That must have been a lot of work to pull that together. Oh, <laughs> Team, teamwork. Yeah. Um. So uh, it's almost seven. Um, we do have one other thing on our um, list, which is the committee liaison share out. We kind of had a, a long share out at the beginning of the meeting, but the, if anyone has any bur burning uh, updates from their <laughs> committees that they're on, I would welcome you to share them now. I have updates if no one else wants to go first. Sure. So this is um, the Greenway committee at the last meeting we talked about probably needing matching funds for Mass Trails Grant for ongoing planning and design work. The grant has been submitted um, and we're asking for $23,000 of local financial match that that should come. To, well, it, it There may be available from old CPA funding, but it may be up to $23,000 of new CPA funding that would be requested in the May town meeting. Uh, so I just want to update um, people on that. Okay. The other piece is, um, is anyone else here from Open Space? Um, Janet. Open Space. Janet? Yeah. Okay. So this may be stuff that I heard that you didn't hear. Um, so when the Mountain Waters Project um, was approved for CPA funding then at the town meeting, one of the le fun weird legal issues came up about um, there's a um, one point approximately $2 million state grant. They require um, a, a, it, the money to be laid out by the town, a certain amount of the money to be laid out by the town before the money gets reimbursed. It's a reimbursement grant. So that we are, it's likely that there is going to be a request from either open space or um, possibly a conservation commission um, for a temporary um funding of like $250,000 that would be reimbursed within a couple months and that it may come to the CPC to do that. And it's sort of a weird legal requirement of that grant. Mm, I remember that. From I, re I remember that too. I think you're right, Mark. <laughs> so I just wanted to, uh, I've spoke to Bridget likely today and or emailed with her and as well as with 
um, Cindy Palmer. And just want to make sure this committee was aware that that's going to come up. And it really is a temporary funding so that the town can lay the money out that would get reimbursed. But that and could be in the request for the funds, that it's only a temporary... Yeah, we the, how it gets worded and that stuff, we sure. clearly mm -hmm. explain it that way. Uh, and so I just want to make sure people are aware that that may be coming up between now and May as a formal request from one of the committees. You're right. Anyone Thank else you. consider anything? Um, I I had to cancel our last meeting because we had several illnesses and conflicts um, for the scheduled meeting, which was last week, and I have not rescheduled it yet, so I have nothing to report. Um, Doug, anything crazy interesting happened over at FinCom? <laughs> You know, I'll try to come with some news for next meeting. Okay. Wow us. <laughs> um, well, there's some like things semi in the works in housing, but they're all so um, nebulous that I, I'm going to wait until next time to update you guys because there's still a lot of questions in the air. So I'll get back to you all on that. Um, is there anything else? Any? Yeah. I'm going to bring up one other thing. Yeah. It was discussed at the last meeting, a request from Tammy Olunas about funding for um, for preserving documents. I'm still uncomfortable with, I, I, I think we should re-explore that um, and how we do that is another story. To me, it, it's an enormous, we, we, to pay for a computer system to make it available for the public doesn't make sense, but to actually scan documents to me is preserving if it's the right documents, is pre preservation. I think we should re-explore that. There's, I know there's a lot of, there's at least three towns have approved that since there was a legal statement from somebody in 2009 from the state saying that it doesn't quite fit. So I, I think we should consider re-exploring that. It, it may not go any place, but I think it's, it's uh, it may be still something that's worth exploring for historic preservation. Mark, question, do do we know exactly what documents she's talking about? Well, no, that, and, and my understanding of reading the requirements is they would have to present to Historic uh, Commission what documents, and you would have to prove that they're important enough to preserve yeah, before they that, could come to the t CPC yeah. to get funding. At, at a minimum, that would be a requirement. And so far, um, the only documents that, I am aware of, and the, and the Historic Commission is aware of, that she even started talking about was the quote, quote, macros inventory, the state inventory. Yeah. Um, she wanted to digitize that. And my answer to her at, with regard to that specifically was that it's already online. It's already yeah. accessible online. So I, I, I'm still not sure what she's talking about yeah. digitizing other, other yeah, than I think, what I, couple, I think there's one more drawer of things that's sort of more like town uh interest sort of things like events and photos and things like that but i think it would have to go to your commission to say it's important enough before yeah. it comes to us as a request yeah um yeah. mark would you be willing um so i actually have a meeting with um johanna and jessica from the library tomorrow okay. um and they were going to present they have like a new idea for their project but they still are trying to convince us that digitization is preservation which is the dr says that would you be willing to email Stuart and chase and just like lay out i think this could be answered in email and not a meeting yeah. just lay out like okay we received the department of revenue letter that says digitization is not preservation and yet here's the three towns that did it like what gives would you be willing yeah. to make that I, I can do that, um, uh, but I think it's it's worth not letting that die quite yet. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, incidentally, at I believe it's 2 o'clock tomorrow, maybe 1 o'clock tomorrow at the library, Carl Walters is doing a, he's calling it an education, a schooling on how to use uh, the, what what he has written with regard to the canal. Uh, how to use his writings. So, uh, and he's, he's, they're saying it's pr approximately an hour long 
and he's going to do that. I believe it's one o'clock tomorrow at the library. Uh -huh. Cool. Okay. Thank you. So I will contact uh, um, Stuart. And, and so can you please give me some JT answers quickly? I can get the answer as soon as possible. I'm doubting we're going to get a response before tomorrow when I talk to them, but also I don't need to have a super, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. final response. Before. I'm just sort of seeing what their idea is. So we'll go from there. All right. Cool. Anything else, y'all, before we schedule our next meeting? I would just like to say one thing. This is Janet. Um, of all the public hearings that we had in the past, we never did a legal ad. And we always published little signs around, like at the dump and the town hall and stuff like that, and on the website. Maybe in addition to asking Ed as Stuart Saginaw at the coalition, <laughs> if we were required to do a legal ad. Well, Stuart was the one who gave me the idea of the legal ad to oh, begin with. Yeah, okay. Um, but... He didn't necessarily say you 100% have to do it. He was just like, and so, you, you know, he said, ask your town clerk and their town administrator. They know what to do. Uh, oh, well, I, I don't think this, I don't think there's anything in the le in the legal, uh, in the in the act that says that. Yeah, I think it's more about like, it wouldn't be in the CPA act, but it would be in the like, what constitutes an, an, a public announcement for a public hearing? Like when it comes yeah. to publishing a town meeting, do they have to publish that in the paper? I think that's the law is that's as going to look up for us. So um. it's a little different. I think the town meeting, but uh, we never put the legal end on all the public hearings we had. We did them for years up until well, the last three or four years. We didn't. We, do them. we definitely won't do it if it's not required because that's just $400. Expense, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we will be that. That. We'll only do it. if we have to. I didn't know that's what Stuart had already told you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's look at scheduling. So um, I sort of already. I'm sorry, everyone. I have to drop off. I just didn't want to disappear without saying goodbye. <laughs> no worries. See you, Doug. Thanks. Right. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Likewise. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, so uh, thus ends our quorum. But I mean, there's certainly precedent for adjourning a meeting without quorum, and we don't need to vote on our scheduled meeting date. So my suggestion in the email I sent out was again the first. Wednesday of the month, which would be what did I say? March 6th. Um, my suggestion was public hearing at 5 p.m. and CPC meeting at 6. Um, and then if nobody shows up for the public hearing, we just go straight into our CPC meeting. So that present a problem if we're over before 6 and someone tries to come to the CPC meeting at 6. Um, well, that's, that's my idea, is CPC meeting 6 p.m. on March 6th and uh, public hearing 5 p.m. on March 6th. At what time was the public hearing? Uh, 5 p.m. To, to be fair to people in town, uh, 5 p.m. is a tough time, well, I think, for a lot of people to make a, a public yeah, meeting Bob if they Cosa, wanted to. Bob Cosa would like it a little later, too. Yeah. What if we do the t public hearing at 6 and the technically CPC meeting at 6.30, and if the public hearing runs over for some reason, we'll start a little later. How about that, 6 and 6.30? The public still, hearing at 6 and our, our regular CPC meeting at 6.30? Is that what you said? Uh, so. Yeah. That works for everyone? Yes. All right, that sounds great. Uh, let me write that down before I forget, even though it's going in the minutes. And, and people should know that they can stay for the CPC meeting because it's open to the public. So. Yes. So public hearing at 6 and our regular meeting at 6.30 on March the 6th. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, well, Move I guess we're, we're stuck in this meeting forever because we can't would, adjourn. Would you like to try to get it in the select board meeting room if, if it's available? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's what we've always had them before. I don't really know how to use all those scary microphones, but um, yes, let's do that. We'll have to check with Lucy. Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Um, and and if we can't do that, we'll do the second floor, and no big deal. First floor. Okay. All right. Um, I heard a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? <coughs> second. <laughs> Oh, I want to stay a little longer. Uh, <laughs> you can right. stay. 
All in favor of adjourning the meeting. Yes. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank Keep you. Going. This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers.